Hey folks, I'm out here for a walk and uh, I gotta be honest, what I'm thinking about is fishing. And in particular, I'm thinking about how much I enjoy shore lunch, cooking fresh fish. Now for a lot of my fishing, I mean, I'm, I'll, I'll catch what the lake offers. Um, but if all things being equal, my preference is to eat walleye. But walleye is sometimes harder to come by depending on where you're fishing. So when I'm fishing in really southern Ontario, southwestern Ontario, uh, harder than when I do my, my trips up north. But pike, northern pike, is something that's pretty abundant in a lot of the lakes. Uh, it's got a similar uh, opening season, and generally you can keep more of them. But what I also like about pike is, you know, you need less of them. You know, one good sized pike can provide an awful lot of meat. One of the things that people don't like about northern pike is they tend to be a bit more challenging to clean if you don't know what you're doing. And in particular, that comes around getting through the Y bones, um, which is, you know, not unique to that fish, but in particularly challenging to clean in that fish. So what I got for you today is a, a video that I shot up at Brace Lake Outfitters out of Nikina, where the owner operator, Kyle Poleski, um, was kind enough to show how he uh, cleans a northern pike and gets the bones out uh, and ready for both eating and for transport. So have a watch at that now. Let me know in the comments whether or not you uh, you like cleaning pike, whether or not you like eating pike. And um, in addition to this video, what I'll do is I'll link in the bottom also my review to my fillet knife, which was from uh, North Arm Knives. And I'll also do a, a link to my experience up at Brace Lake Outfitters, which I've been to twice. And I'm going to be heading there again in 2020. So again, why don't you enjoy this video on cleaning a northern pike. And uh, if you like what you're seeing here, why don't you subscribe to the channel? We'd appreciate that. And uh, hit the notification bell so that you can know when the next video drops. Thanks a bunch. Hi right, folks, we're up here with uh, Brace Lake Outfitters on Brace Lake. This is Kyle Pleski, owner operator. And we're gonna take a look at how he cleans a Northern Pike. Now this doesn't mean this is the best way or the only way, cause there's lots, but this is his preferred method. So we got a 26 inch Northern caught this morning and let's uh, let's hear how he does it. Alrighty, we, uh, we go right to the head okay. and uh, cut straight down. So that'd be the same as doing a walleye. For sure. Um, from the head, then I like to go down to the anus and work my way back up. Some people go around the fins at that point, but for sake of argument, I've just been doing it this way all my life. So then we fillet it, just, just like a walleye. So you're just going straight down the spine? Straight down the spine. And you're right, there's many different ways. Everybody has their own preference on how to do this. There's one fillet. Same in reverse. Okay. All right, so now I think the real magic here is how do you deal with the Y bones? Yeah, it's uh, real simple. Mother Nature has designed the Northern Pike with some easy, easy instructions on her. But first things first. Off the fin? Off the fin. Um, start on this one because it's my forehand. So we'll do the same thing on this one. Slimy board. And for those wondering at home, I'm wearing gloves because I've developed a hypersensitivity to a lot of fish slime. So here we go. So we'll take the ribs out first. So this is the rib, not the Y bone. This is just the rib. And you're just feeling basically down? Yep, just feel the rib and just kind of flay it off there. On these bigger, little, you know, medium-sized northerns are uh, much easier to navigate. The bones are well, well pronounced and developed, and easy to find. So now you've you've cleared them, so to speak. Pretty much, we're just about through here. They're a little thicker up by the by the head portion, but. Pretty much it for for the ribs. 
Okay. They're there. So that's like like almost no wasted meat at all. None. Hopefully. So if we feel, which you can't because you're watching, um, there's a line of bones here, so probably can hear that. Yep. So we want to be north and south. So I always tell people when I'm teaching them that you want to put your knife and make your first cut on the top side, right on the north side of it. Just make the first slice so that you're not through them, but down so that you can feel them. So I'm right down to them. And for depth, you're not expecting to go right through the fillet at this point. Nope, nope, for sure. Um, so what I do is then I just have my knife and follow, just follow them down, just fillet them off. Take a little extra time, make sure you, you know, get a nice cut and get them all. Um, and I don't cut it off. I've seen a lot of instructions out there that tell you to just take, keep, continue on, run this piece right off, and I don't. And the reason is, is that when you're packaging it, if you do come across enforcement, they're going to say, what's this? So it's all connected. So I'm already past all the bones. I don't know if you can zoom in on that and see. I'm past all the bones. Mm -hmm. Meat's still connected. So on the fillet, Mother Nature designed this thing that there's this beautiful center line from where the rib started. And you basically mm -hmm. put your knife parallel to the table and be on the south side of it. And you should see it just go right underneath the ribs. And you'll feel them and just follow them down. Now, some people say you got to turn your blade up. Is that the case here? No, I'm just going straight, following them. And then once you're past, just grab it. And it comes right out like a zipper. Wow. All the way done. So there it is. So you still have this not mystery meat attached and you have a, end up with a beautiful fillet. That is beauty. And then you just take the skin off, making sure you leave your one square inch attached for yeah. transportation. Yeah, and this we are taking this to transport, so that's important to leave the skin so they can identify the animal. Correct. And what we ship. like to do here is when we're doing this is we go right to within a centimeter of the end and leave it all connected. Because mm -hmm. for pike, it's harder they don't really fit in the Ziploc bags very well if you're not vacuum sealing them. Right. Plus you have one side still protected for uh, just in case it's in the freezer a little longer than it should be for uh, freezer burn. Beauty. So there it is. So we just do the exact same on the other side. So we can do this one at Kyle speed. I think that one, the first one was my speed. So the same thing, we're going to take the ribs off. And they're basically, you know, the lateral line would be your guide there? Um, pretty much, yes. Spinning around and feel for the bones. Now this cut starts off straight, but does it angle as you go deeper? Uh, no, as long as the fillet is straight, it should be a straight cut. Okay. We're all the way down. And, and how do you know you're all the way down? Is it because you've, you're not feeling the bones yeah, sticking anymore? Usually past the dorsal fin, the um, or the anal fin, the um, the ribs stop. They pretty much follow the, okay. the ribs. But I do like to take my time with this piece. Mm -hmm. Now, now you mentioned, you know, your forehand. Are you like a lot of us where you have a, a better one fillet, fillet will always be better? Correct. Yeah. Just about through. 
and then right to the table in parallel. Nicely done. And would you eventually take that silver skin off, or do you worry about it just cooking? I, I think this far north, it's not an issue. Some yeah. people, it all depends on preference. Because of the mercury, I, I believe that's the uh, the, the concern. The for concern some? of it, yes. Yeah. There it is. Nicely done. Thank you. Oh.